Welcome to General Normal Distributions. So this is a continuation from our looking at just our normal distribution or our bell curve. So the first thing we're looking at is positive and negative skewed. So the normal distribution has no skewness. So that means that the mean, median and mode are all in the center uh, and that's our bell curve. But when we have a higher or a lower mode compared with the mean and median, this is called skewed data. So positive skewed is when the mode is less than the medium, which is less than the mean, and negative skewness is when the mode is higher than the median and higher than the mean. Now, one way to look at it by putting a plus and a minus there, positive skewness, the tail heads towards the positive side, and for negative skewness, the tail heads to the negative side. So in any normal distribution, um, the Z score is a number of standard deviations. A score is above or below the mean. And the formula from your reference sheet uh, is Z equals X minus mu over uh, sigma. And that is um, where the X is the score, mu is the mean, and the sigma is the standard deviation. And we're going to have a look at how we actually use this to calculate Z scores. So in a so here's an example. In a test, the mean is 63, and the standard deviation is 12. We're going to find all the scores that would be equivalent to Z scores from minus three to three, and the Z score for a result of 60. So for the minus three to three, we'll use this comes um, this graph comes from the uh, reference sheet. Um, so let's use it. So the mean is the center. So the mean is um, Z score of zero and the standard deviation is 12. So we've got no standard deviation because the mean is the middle for a bell curve um, for a normal distribution. So if we have a Z score of 12, that means that, uh, sorry, a standard deviation of 12, that means that a Z score of one is adding 12 onto our mean. So 63 and 12 gets us 75. And to get the Z score of two, we can uh, add two standard deviations or add 12 to our first one, so to our 75. So adding 12 to 75 gets you 87. Adding 12 gets you 99 for a Z score of three. To go in the reverse, we subtract 12. So from 63, subtracting 12 gets you 51. Subtracting 12 again gets you 39, and subtracting 12 again gets you 27. So that's how we come up with our Z scores. We can use the formula, or sometimes it's easier just to write them all out um, with the mean in the middle, adding a Z score each time to the right, and subtracting a Z score each time to the left. So if we wanna now find a Z score for a result of 60, so a result of 60 is somewhere between zero and minus one. Well, we're gonna use the formula to get the exact value. So, but we know that we obviously need a zero between, uh, an answer between zero and minus one. So putting 60 in, so 60 is the score, our mean is 63 over the standard deviation, which is 12, gets us a Z score of minus 0 0.25. Sometimes in exams, they'll ask you to explain what that, what that stands for. Well, that means that the score of 60 is 0.25 standard deviations below the mean, because it's a negative. So here's the second example. So we've got a normally distributed random variable X. It's got the mean of 50 and the standard deviation of 15. And we want to find the probability that X is less than or equal to 83. So remember our Z scores and our Z score table actually allow us to find um, probability. So firstly, we're going to convert the 83 to a Z score, and we've got our formula for that. So converting at 83 minus the mean of 50 over the standard deviation of 15 gets us a Z score of 2.2. Now from our previous video, because 2.2 is not an exact, so we can't use the empirical. Um, so we're going to have to use our table that we used in our previous video. So finding 2.2, remember below 2.2 is comes from the table, and that is 
9861. So the probability that a score is less than or equal to 85 is equal to 0.9861. Thank you.